All right, I'm at the uh, 45th Infantry Division Museum here. So. So I'm gonna show you that World War II gas mask, the Mickey Mouse gas mask in a second. But I also want to let you know that if you're interested at all in anything World War II, then you're gonna to wanna to stick around after I show you the gas mask because I'm gonna take you through a little bit of a tour in this museum and show you some amazing uh, Nazi memorabilia. This collection here is unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's fascinating. It's just, it's fascinating. But this is um, the 45th Infantry Division Museum here in uh, Oklahoma City, just outside of the, the main city. And I'm gonna take you in right now. I'm gonna show you that mask. I have never seen anything like this. I knew they existed, but wow. All right, so this is just one of the rooms. Uh, I talked to somebody up front and they said it was somewhere, it was back in this corner here. It's not something that's really featured, but it's from my understanding, it's incredibly rare. Yeah, look at this, here it is. Wow. The Mickey Mouse gas mask. Now, I have read it was designed by Walt Disney himself. So obviously that's the canister at the bottom. Glass eyes. The ears, it's just, it's just a rubber, so it's deteriorated over time. Major Robert D. Walk of the U.S. Army Reserve explained, quote, the mask was designed so children would carry it and wear it as part of, the, of a game. This would reduce the fear associated with wearing a mask or wearing a gas mask and hopefully improve their wear time and hence survivability. I mean, I can't imagine being in a situation, being a child. I, I, they probably wouldn't even understand what was going on, which is why the whole the game aspect came into play. Like, this is a game. Let's get on our Mickey Mouse masks. It's Mickey Mouse. Crazy. Yeah, I've managed to find a photo of what, what appears to be Walt Disney presenting his uh, gas mask design in January of 1942 to Colonel George Fisher, the chief of Civil War Defense Division, and Major General William Porter, chief of the Chemical Warfare Service. Now, from what I understand, it is very rare to see one of these. I guess maybe there are some online for sale and they're in various states of condition, but I believe that uh, others can be found at the U.S. Army Chemical Museum in Fort McClellan in Alabama and in the Walt Disney Archives in Burbank, California. And I believe there's one in uh, Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri. By the way, this is what is making all the noise. They have all these awesome uh, setups here. A lot of Vietnam stuff in here. But uh, all wars are really, well, most wars are, are uh, displayed in here from the Revolutionary War, everything, Civil War, all the way up to uh, Gulf War. All right, like I told you, there's a healthy amount of Nazi memorabilia here. I'm gonna take you into that room because this is incredible. Check this out. I mean, this is fascinating. Now, I believe this is the world's largest display of Hitler's personal artifacts, personal collections here. Look at this. Now, this is 
Hitler's bed linen. You can see the A H and the uh, Nazi insignia here. Look at this in this chest. It says, in this chest, Hitler kept copies of his book translated in foreign languages. The German ones were German, so they're better crafted. And then because the war kept going on and on, couldn't make enough Thompson, so the US started to make 45 caliber, kind of similar to the Sten and the, the 45. Those grease guns are really quite good. They used to give them to the tankers and that. There's a second uh, weapon. Look at these machine guns. Man, these things look intimidating. So instead of having a pin, their grenades are a bit bizarre, right? Yeah. So you have a stick, and you'd have to you'd unscrew the bottom, and then there'd be this little like a strong Flower, like cord. pull cord, and you'd pull it. A little bit less explosive than the um, American grenades. That's a wood you can, yeah, exactly. So you can kind of throw it even further. That's like toss it like a baton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same concept. Yeah. You probably heard in the background there was a guy talking. He seemed very knowledgeable, so I was just kind of letting him go, listen, <laughs> listening to what he was saying. Pretty interesting guy. 
So if you're in the Oklahoma City area and you want to see something amazing, check out this museum, the 45th Infantry Division Museum here in Oklahoma City. Unbelievable amount of uh, stuff here. The collection is uh, unmatched from what I've seen. All right, I'm getting back on the road. See you in the next video.